nobody ever did in Botswana. People are scared to do these kind of things. You know what I mean? Like having booty butt chicks all over. I was I was the first guy to do that. One Lati, what's up? I'm too nice, dog. I'm chilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the 20th of your podcast, bro. My name is Lati, aka Gap City's boyfriend, aka yeah. the most hated, uh -huh. aka public enemy number one, aka Swaggy Sweezy. Baby, never had a baby. You know the vibes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm here. Thank you, and uh, thank you for having me. Away, away, away. So let's just start off by you explaining your hairstyle, bro. Like, yeah. just give us a, an explanation. What do you want to say? Yo, uh, it's a very... Got it. Okay. It's a little bit of everything. Uh -huh. Basic, basically, it started off... Okay, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. Okay. Jehovah's Witnesses, they're not, we're basically not... We're not allowed to do anything. Mm -hmm. You know... Uh, we didn't celebrate birthdays, we didn't celebrate Christmas, we didn't celebrate New Year's, we didn't celebrate Easter's. We couldn't even, I couldn't even dress like this or have a hairstyle like this. But I've always been this person. Yeah, yeah. Nothing really changed. You know, yeah. it's just that I couldn't express myself at the time. Because, you know, when you're living under, you know, Batsadi's house, you know, you gotta do as the Romans do. Yeah. So, um... I couldn't I couldn't do anything that I wanted. So you know at some point when I finally got to be free and do what I wanted to do um I got like a small mohawk. You know it was way smaller than this one. It was almost like a brush cut with like a little pharaoh on top. You know what I mean like a a pharaoh. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um and Mohawks at the time were in fashion, so for me it was a statement. You know, it was me just saying, yo, you know, I'm just gonna do what I want. Oh, and so <laughs> I did what I wanted, you know, and uh, it started off because it was a trend at the time, but then um, it kept on growing and growing and growing and growing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then at some point, I had it for so long that People are so used to it that it turned into a brand. Mm -hmm. So that's how it started. Okay. So it start. It was, it was a statement at first. Like I just wanted to do something that is, you know, provocative, you know, to the fact that, to the religion, or yo, I'm gonna do what I want now. Yeah. And I understand at some point, like your uncles were not happy about this hairstyle. They even kicked you out of the house. Um. Yeah. No, it's, all, it's it's weird now talking about it because we made peace, everything is all good. Well, that's what. Uh -huh. But yeah, at the at the time, you know, I was staying with my aunt, you know, and um, she didn't like the hairstyle. And, you know, they wanted me to cut it off and stop, you know, these X models things, you know. And uh, I was made, I was given an ultimatum to pick between, you know, moving out and... Uh, Keeping the hairstyle, so I chose moving out. And how was that? How was that? How was that process? Um, on a real, moving out wasn't easy at all. You know what I mean? Like, um, you move in with people. You're not like when you get kicked out. You're not obviously you're staying at home. Yeah. So that means you're not ready to move out. That's why you're staying at home. Mm -hmm. So when I moved out now, I didn't have money. So I go to the people that I, I, I thought were friends, you know, yeah. at the time. And, uh, you know, after we, the first week, now it's all nice. Yo, Lati, yo, way, oh my not the dog. You know, like, it's all it's all nice. Everything's dope. And then the second week, yeah, one I'm not the, but it's starting to dumb down just a little. Yeah. And then probably the fourth week, now it's like, hey, man, na, eh. hey, man, oh, like um you know i like like they start saying you know funny things now where you feel like ah oh, are these my boys now 
mm. you know, and then it gets to a point now you gotta maybe end up moving because they come up with stories now what they, you know, my uncle was here, kind of, my, my father was here and they, they saw you and they feel like you gotta move out because, you know, they are saying they are paying for me and you are, you're having people over here. And you at that time, you've never seen no uncle come through. You've never seen no mother or father come through. But you end up, you know, having to move out. So you you end up jumping from one place to another. So, yeah, it just it got, like, really hard. I don't want to lie to you. It really got hard. Yeah. All right. It's crazy. All right. Uh, so how, how did you manage to, to, to sail through up to your own, your own nest, if I can put it that way? Um, for me, um, it was mostly because, you know, I've always been somebody who always believed that um, whatever that I'm pushing is going to work out. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and that is a, is a blessing from God that I had, you know, like where... Every time when I was pushing, no matter how hard things were, you know, I'd always feel like, you know, I believe in myself and things will work out in the end. You know what I mean? So I kept on just pushing no matter what. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, just to take it back a bit. Mm -hmm. who, who is Lati? What, what, what you do, bro? Because you're into music, you're a model, you own a modeling agency, you're a DJ, you host a TV show, Smash Your Purse. Yeah. What is it like? Uma Angela, like, Angela, like. Uh, okay. Who am I in terms of like, uh, my who career? Who is that? Like, Angela, like, Ima. Yo, you, yeah. um, I like to say, um, uh, I'm just a guy from humble beginnings. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I started, I never had nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, grandmother was a teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh, Narana saying, you know, we've had our fair share of like, uh. You know the heaviest things you know what i mean like um yeah man it was never easy growing up it, lo it probably might have looked easy for some people who were outside who were like hey no on the mutisha squad that thing so what are you what are you crying about but it was like it was crazy bro like it was really really crazy mm -hmm. i don't, <laughs> don't really want the world to know this but you have city but yeah, yeah um it was crazy, bro. Like there was a lot of things that were happening. You know, there were there were times where things were good, but then um, you know, in my family there was a lot of deaths. I lost um, I lost my father, I lost my mother, grandparents, great grandparents. Like it was crazy. I lost. There was just a lot of deaths. So every time, and you gotta know that in a Setswana, you know, family, every time somebody dies, you spend. Yeah. You spend. The person who's mourning is the person who spends. Mm -hmm. That's how it, that's how it works. Just like weddings, when you're getting married, it's not the people who pay for your wedding. You pay for it. Like you 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 feed people. You pay for the venues, everything. You know what I mean. By the time the funeral is done, go to you're crying at the same time, but you're spending so much money. So things just started, um, you know, getting worse and worse and worse and worse you know so there were times when it was just uh, crazy yeah where was i going with this what was the question the question was um umang Kemang. yeah umang. and then what did i start saying uh, i just gave us a breakdown of your family and everything oh yeah it was yeah. hard yeah that's where i was at um yeah. yeah it was it was crazy so you know Oh yeah, I was saying, Hore, you know, when you're looking from outside, it might have looked easy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, it just started getting hard. So mm -hmm. life just started getting harder and harder and harder. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we had a, a mother who was a God-fearing and God-loving, you know, parent. Nguguaron, mm -hmm. actually, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so in that way, um, as much as I said, you know, being a Jehovah's Witness, which was her religion that she loved so much and she made sure that we were part of. Uh, and that thing, you know, it also helped us, you know, uh, learn discipline, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, Jehovah's when you can't have sex before marriage. You know, you got to make sure you don't steal, you don't convert the next person's wife, you know. So those things helped us, uh, you know, develop discipline. Other kids would be having sex and you're like, no, I can't do this because, you know, I love God. You know, they'll be stealing or doing funny things at school. You know, like, I can't do this. Because, you know. 
and parents be saying study hard and you know that at church you got to listen to your parents so you study hard you know what i mean so and those things help me to become the person i am today mm-hmm. so yeah uh humble beginnings into somebody who kept on pushing but at the same time you know um lati was always a guy who went in hard in school yeah. like in everything i did like i always made sure i was good at everything i did bro like when it came to there was no subject that i failed mm-hmm. you feel me like everything that i i ever applied my mind to i was always good at it mm-hmm. you feel mm-hmm. me like when it came to agriculture i was a kid when i look what like being like i'd be planting um me the um the now everything even at school i'd be having one of the biggest plots but also when it came to like um you know theory we killing it religious education obviously i was studying religion in terms of jehovah's witnesses mm-hmm. but even when it came to be hindu and everything i was killing it you know what i mean bro there's so much bro i'm going to keep talking that's the thing <laughs> yeah okay there's so much like okay. you got to direct this cuz there's yeah, so much yeah, to yeah, say yeah 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 no i get you i get yeah. you i get you there's so much to say cuz this this is your life story life story yeah and it will never end cuz there's so much bro. and you're still writing the story yeah hey, <laughs> but uh, now my, my my question is yeah. it's interesting that you you were a strong christian but yeah. you ended up becoming a really bad bad how did you become light from light to light um yeah Yeah, I think I think um it's part of just being feeling like you were in a cage your whole life cuz you know like like I said we didn't celebrate both Christmas and New Year. We New Year would be inside the house and we know that everybody out there is is, is partying or mm. the, the the fireworks obviously come on we're not deaf we can hear the cricket the like one then mm. we watch movies we know what happens during New Year's. Mm. So excuse we're just watching everything out the window mm-hmm. so got that thing and i always love fashion i always love fashion so i always wanted to dress in the hardest clothes you know but i couldn't so it was jail all of these things it was jail i it felt like jail in a certain way cuz i mean come on that's i mean being a christian yeah cool but it doesn't mean that you can't be yourself you can't you can't dress a certain way you can't do bro you know what i mean so when i finally now um got sadly uh grandma passed away uh in 2009 mm-hmm. while well, when i saw i kept on school. i was in, i think yeah i was in school then at some point i got to ub yeah uh, when i got to ub bro <laughs> <laughs> the rest is history <laughs> bro <laughs> like um But now as it was up to me like for the first time I could decide anything about my life mm-hmm. and nobody could tell me nothing I mean but I didn't know what thing but I got to a point now where I was like enough is enough I'm not a bad kid I'm not trying to kill or rob anybody mm-hmm. all I want to do is just live my life the way I want to live it I want to do the type of career I, the the type of career that I want and I'm going to do just that. Mm-hmm. So that's when I was like, yo, I'm going to be whoever I want. I'm gonna do the hairstyle that I want. I'm going to do anything that I want. So that's where Lati started. Okay, that's where Lati now was starting to progress like properly. Cuz obviously like re in bo high school, you know, you're doing it mm. in small steps you know cuz i had a small mohawk and i used to get shaped for it like every single week mm-hmm. there was some teacher called mr lesolo nekare he was hired to fucking beat me yeah when when last did you meet uh, meet uh, mr lesolo i saw mr lesolo um i think that was um three years ago oh. he was so happy to see me and i was happy to see him as well cuz i uh, I always say like um I have the weakness of forgiving everybody but yeah. people always tell me it's not a weakness but I yeah. always forgive everybody. Okay. So now I, I want us to talk about the UPTs now that like this when you you started appearing on social media mm-hmm. mainstream media 
with girls, she were rapping, you're throwing parties. Like, what yeah. was going on there? Is it something that you conceptualized or it's something that just, just came about? I got to UB, I was studying Bachelor of Finance, you know, uh, but also I was excited, bro. Think mm. about it, dog. I lost my virginity late. I was a late bloomer. Bro, um, I think I started drinking at what, 16? Yeah, 16. Because I get away, our teachers were on strike and everything, so we had nothing to do. We were waiting for school. School took longer to open. So, yeah, we started sipping. So, drinking was still, it was relatively new because we were doing it in bits because we had to go to school, come back. When you're at school, you're not drinking. So, yeah, we got to UB now. We're still excited about everything, bro. Like, yo, we just saw sex. We, we have just experienced sex. We just experienced alcohol. And, uh, it's my first time being on my own with no parents like proper. I mean, I was in boarding school, in uh, in in uh, senior school. Yeah. But it's not the same because when you close, you go back home. Mm -hmm. And when you're in boarding school, uh, boarding masters and everybody teachers they govern you, mm -hmm. so they control you. But in UB, bro, mm -hmm. this is now the first time I ever seen freedom. So yeah. now this is the time for me to be whoever I wanted to be. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to taste all types of liquor. I wanted to kiss all types of girls. I just wanted to have fun, bro. Okay. I wanted to have fun. So um, so it was time for me to be the person that I always wanted to be, to just have fun and experience as a, as a young person who just wants to have fun, bro. Yeah, and that was yeah. it. That was the experience. The experience was amazing. I dated... Um, I dated the baddest bitch. Okay, I can't say her name right now, but she was a twerker and she was fine at the time. You know what I mean? Like it was it was crazy. People used to think she was older than me because you know with the yo dog. You know, old enough to be dating that kind of booty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like and uh I remember there was a time she was on page three, bro. Oh yo, it was crazy. You can't say the name, she got kids now. Yeah, I respect her like that, you know. Okay. Yeah, so, but, like, it was crazy at the time, bro. So, she would always bring, like, her twerker maids to come through to the room. I'd always have, like, a, a, a laptop, like, open. And everybody who came to the room were recording all the parties, bro. Like, it was just fun. It was fun, bro. Like, um, I remember, I don't know, my mates will forgive me, but I'm going to tell the story. We were so crazy. We were so crazy. Kinda, that's what happens. A child is like a spring. If you... Sp if you press a spring, when you let it go, it springs out. Yeah. So the fact that the whole my whole life I was like pressed like a spring. Yeah. When I finally got my freedom, I went crazy. Cause now I was seeing everything for the first time. I never used to travel. I never used to do anything. We were always closing the house and go to church. We ate church for dinner. We ate church for breakfast. We ate church for lunch. Bro. Saturday we were preaching. I was the guy who's, you know, Jehovah's Witness, who we were knocking at your door. That was me. I was knocking at your door. I, I could knock at your door on a Monday if the schools are closed. I would knock at your door. Bro, even Wednesday we went to church, even if there was school. So now when we got there, bro, yo, it was time. <laughs> it was time, bro. We went, hey, yeah, 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 bro. We'd go, bro, when allowance dropped in. We drink all of it in uh, probably like a week or a week and a half. Were there any drugs involved there? Nah, never. One thing I never did is drugs. Because, um, hey, bro, now I know myself. I'm, I have a very addictive personality. Like, Corey, you know, because the way we were drinking liquor was, it was crazy. We just sipped liquor like it was the first time we ever saw it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, if I ever, I know that one thing if I, that if I ever did. I'd never get back as drugs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So drugs is that one thing where I'm like, okay, no, this is where we draw the line. And that is where um, growing up as a Jehovah's Witness helped me. Okay. You get like, I'm able to draw the line. Like being uh, raised under like a Christian family helps you to be able to have a conscience. To be like, oh, okay, no, 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 this one. No, 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 not this one yet. Ah. No, no, not this one. Yeah, yeah, like this one is just too crazy. So that's what helped me. Along the process, you become immortal now. Mm-hmm. 
You're doing activations and stuff. Yeah, promo boy. Is, it, is there something called a promo boy? Uh, yeah, something like a promo model. Yeah, promo model. Yeah. yeah. Um, how I became a model actually was um, in uh, when I was in when when I just finished form five, I I went to UV. There used to be like my boy that I used to check there, who used to be in the same school as me in Good Hope Senior. Mm -hmm. I went to Good Hope Senior. Mm -hmm. L.O.P. His name was, yeah. No, no, no. Good Hope. Oh, good Hope. Oh, okay, oh. after Good Hope. All right. Bupi right. Tane there where the ministers used to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so his name was Randy Slick. That was my boy. He used to do like rap sessions back in Good Hope. Yeah. So um, I was going to check him. Hella, you know, that was my boy. So Nicky Loach, because I had nothing to do. Nicky to a form five at the time. So, uh, on my way to go see him, actually, on my way back from seeing him, I bumped into a guy called Foster Monyapilu. I think a lot of people know him now, you know, mm -hmm. in the corporate, like, okay. I think some people know him. Yeah, like, he was, um, he had um, some clothing label, it was called, uh, hey, I can't, yo, yeah. you'll kill me, bro, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah I, can't, I can't remember it right now. But yeah, he had a clothing label and he told me that uh, yo, um, I like your look. I still had the mohawk at the time. Yeah. I like your look, but it was way smaller. I like your look and I feel like I, I, I'm starting a clothing label and I want you to come through. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I know, cool. Because at that time, I'd always wanted to be a model, but I never knew where to start. Yeah. I don't know what if you want to be a model, where do you go? What are the procedures and stuff? Yeah. So I was like, 100% hell yeah, let's go. I didn't even care about getting paid. All I just wanted to do is just work. Mm -hmm. You know, I just wanted to be a part of something. So I went there and uh, we did the photo shoot. That's where I met uh, a guy who introduced me to... Um, okay, actually, um, let me just say it because I don't have any bad blood with anybody anymore. You know? Mm -hmm. His name is King. Yeah. You know, he was starting um, an agency called Empire, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he was like, we met there at the photo shoot. He was also a model in the shoot, Yeah. but he had ideas of starting a modeling agency. Mm -hmm. He had, so yeah, we went to the shoot and uh, after the shoot, he told me, yeah, no, uh, I'm trying to start something. I guess he also liked my look. Yeah. So he was like, yo, come through. And I agreed. Went to, we did a couple of shoots and stuff. And then, we had a f as time went on, because I've always been a hard worker. my life when you say, like, tea's full of shit, like, tea this, like, tea that. But when it comes to the work, <coughs> when it comes to the work ethic, you can't mess with me. Yeah. That's on God. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he's like, come through. We went through, we started this agency. Yeah. And then, we can continue from there. Yeah. No, so that's I, how it's yeah, 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 yeah. And then you, you go on to start your own agents and then there were accusations that would just talk or you're showing your own stock of models. Which accusations, dog? I never heard of those. Yeah, they were there online. For real? Yeah, oh, they, okay. they were saying that you're showing your own models. For real? When I was that? The time whereby, uh, I don't know if it's a sex tape or what, when it dropped. Oh, 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 people... Oh, is that what people are saying? Yeah, there was saying that those two. Okay, so for 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 those who don't know, yeah. there was a time where Bailati was in a video. Yeah. With two naked girls. Uh huh. I don't know what you guys were doing. Okay. Yeah. So people thought we're that, having sex. I don't know about that. Bro. I'm telling you. Oh, you, okay. okay yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, just explain to us what was happening in that video because that video was trending at some point. Cut that. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, we were just having a good night, you know, mm. uh, with the shorties. It was just good times and good vibes, you know. It was back then, you know what I mean. And um, it just happened. Or, yeah, videos recorded and everything, mm -hmm. you know. Cause, mm -hmm. you know, people shouldn't think. Come on, dog. Mm -hmm. People need to understand. <laughs> I'm not ugly. <laughs> I'm pretty. You know what I mean? And I got game. And I'm confident. And I know how to approach women. So, Corey, I don't have to hit on my own models. 
you know, to, to be able to get laid. No, that's not how it works. You feel me? Mm. So, yeah, we were having a good time, whatever it happened. You know what I mean? I mean, come on, we were young, we were having fun. It was dope. You know what I mean? And, yeah, that's what happened. And it happened, Jorge, you know, uh, there was just a lot of people in my life who were getting in, out in my crib. We were just always getting lit, having fun. You know, come on, you know how the entertainment in your life could get, especially yeah. when you're still young and, uh, you know, coming up, it's fun. Even if you're not in the entertainment game, you know, you're still experimenting stuff, you're having fun. And I just happen to be having more fun. And people hate, they'll say stuff. And I don't blame the people who probably thought, um, you know, I was, you know, uh, chowing stock, like they, you said they said. I mean, come on, like, a lot of, a lot of niggas wish they could, you know, have threesomes, you know, do those kind of things. And I don't, I don't blame them for saying that kind of stuff, you know, because, yeah, it's, it's, it's not something that everybody could do. You feel me? So, yeah, but that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, by that time, you're, you're making a lot of money. You're throwing parties and mm. you're getting endorsements from different brands and stuff like that. 100%. Yeah. Mm. What, what, what did you do with that money? What um, were you doing with it? Okay, um... Yeah, I remember when we made like a, a lot of money from our shop at some point. Mm, I bought cameras. Yeah. You know, I bought a printer. Um, paid models, obviously. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what else did I do? I was investing into, you know, like um, other projects that I was doing. You feel me? And yeah. obviously, other money I was using it also to you know, uh, live. And you feel uh, women, Abba Fazi. Abba Fazi. Yeah. Ah, no, no, no. When I was, <coughs> when I was making my, uh, my most money, I was in a relationship at the time. Yeah. Yeah. With who? Um, with the lady at the, yeah, I was a chick at the point that I was seeing. Yeah. Yeah, we were staying together. I've always been a guy who likes cohabitating. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, and the cheatings, like where you, cause like like you're saying that you're famous and all that. Like, mm, 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 I'm sure, like um, yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Cheating. Yeah. As in cheating the 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 girl. Yeah. Ah uh, no 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 no. Uh, one thing about me is uh, when I'm in a relationship, I don't cheat. Okay. I don't cheat unless I, I don't know, dog. Like unless it's um a situation where uh. I, like where I keep on saying, yo, let's do this, 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 let's do this. And you're not listening to me. I'm trying to, you know, fix things, fix things, fix things, fix things, fix things. And then it just gets to a point where I'm just like, ah, whatever, man. Do what I want. You feel me? Yeah. But, and when it gets to that point is when now I'm just now done. Okay. And I just want to leave. But hella, hella me. When I'm single, yeah, we could party all night. We could do whatever the f you want. I'm a, I'm a bachelor. I'm a single nigga. I could do whatever I want. But when I'm in a relationship, uh, I'm loyal. Yeah. And it's very rare to find me in a relationship. My relationship probably can't fit in one arm, or can all fit in this these five arms. Like my real relationships. Okay. Okay. Still, still talking about your fame and everything. Yeah. You come from a Christian background, and now you're a bad boy. Po a, a poster bad boy yeah. poster boy with like all the bad boys in, in Khabarone what is the family saying about it now um, I think my family knows uh, okay like with me um, my family at first didn't understand me that's how I like yeah. and when I say my family I mean like immediate family extended family they didn't get um, what I was trying to do and I understand now and I had side Jorge Obviously, parents want the best for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. they get scared now when you're doing things like, you know, uh, not being at school, uh, you know, you know stuff like that. You actually eventually quit school, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. No, actually, I failed and discontinued. Any regrets? Mm, not really. Not really. Uh-huh. Yeah, but... Uh, okay, let me... Let me try and put it like in proper words. 
Yeah. There's a little bit of both. Yeah. Obviously, I uh, had I gone through at school, I could have learned um so many things. But life is so weird in a way that um if you change even with one day, mm-hmm. everything can change so drastically. Yeah. From what anything could have been. Let me say, for example. Mm-hmm. You let me say you can decide what okay I quit school today. Yeah. Or you can decide I quit school tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Both the outcomes can be completely different things. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm. So I don't know. I, I I can think about it this way, Kero. Okay, if I quit school, um, if I didn't quit school, I could have learned more about marketing, business management, because all those courses were there, statistics, economic, economics, and it's very important in business. But also at the same time, um, I probably would have never learned the things that I learned right now mm-hmm. you know what i mean and yeah. uh because i also gained a lot of experience in the industry and everything so things you you can never really know how things would have turned out yeah so the way i see my things in my life and my career elevating right now from a guy that nobody understood and everybody kept on hating and blocking and people just saying i ain't good at nothing no matter what i did everybody said it sucked yeah. Where I'm at right now, and in my mind, not in their minds, mm-hmm. I feel um, I'm on the right track. So I'd like to say I really don't regret. But if I got to maybe, if I change my mind in the future and feel like I gotta go to school, I mean, it's not like I'll be any dumber. Okay. Yeah, uh, the brains are still not dumb and dumber. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like you keep on emphasizing that you've made peace. Um, so I just want to know what what's your beef with Scar? And have you made pe- uh, peace with him? Uh, me and Scar, we good. I actually, uh, before I came here, I shared his flyer. Is it? Yeah, I think Scar is, Scar is dope. He's actually the first person to, like when I first started like with X Models Agency, though we, we haven't really gotten deep into it. We'll get into it. But like when I was starting this modeling agency that I ended up starting after I left um, the agency I was at, I yeah. started my own. So... I, I've always been a go-getter. I was a guy who used to like inbox these celebs, these artists, everybody be like, yo, I offer models for music videos, promo models, stuff like that, you know, for music video shoots and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember the guys we were big at the time, it was Sky, Oracle, Juju Boy, Mosaku. Apollo. You know, I'd inbox all of these guys, even the radio guys, you know? Yeah. And then Scar was the first to reply. Mm-hmm. He was the first to reply. Mm. You know, and he told me, uh, yeah, I heard what you said. Because uh, we had been doing photo shoots before. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, let me cut straight into the chase. Uh, yeah. So I expect a call from this lady. Um, And then uh, I got my first gig from the lady who was through a marketing agency and the, the first uh, customer was Bartley's. Who was the lead? <laughs> and they... Who was the lady? The lady, the lady, <laughs> as the lady that I ended up dating later. The one that uh, was his ex girlfriend, and yeah, it was his ex girlfriend. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So the beef behind everything was uh, proved due to the fact that you guys dated one person. Um. <coughs> okay. Uh. Let me let me tell it straight now. Huh. Uh-huh. Since I get it, we're all grown. Yeah. Um. Okay. That's what happened. I get it. This lady. Gave me the business. Yeah. She was from the marketing agency, but she never actually came to the to the ground. Uh-huh. Like where the... Because when um, we were in, what you call it, Riverwalk. Yeah. At the time, this was... Was it 2015, 2016, 15? Somewhere there, yeah. 15, 16, 16. Yeah, yeah. Well, and so we were there at Riverwalk, and she was working there. And I never met her. Yeah. At the time. I mm-hmm. just spoke to her on the phone. So other people came through there. And, and then um then years later I met this lady. Mm-hmm. And then uh while we were talking, she told me, you know, uh we were still in talking phase and everything. I mean, uh she was a little bit older than me, like what, five years, or, but she was very pretty. Mm-hmm. And, and then um she told me about the fact that her and Scar were exes. So I asked her, um, are you for real? She's like, yeah, cool, yeah. 
So it became, it, then knowing, you know, she ended up, I ended up finding out her, ah, so this is the same shorty that I was speaking to back then. Yeah. You know, probably like three, four years ago. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, so that's her. Ah, yeah. Okay. So then I took it as a man. I like, okay, let me be real to the OG. Mm-hmm. The guy who put me in the game. The one who introduced me to this lady even. So I called um, Scott. Said, Yo, bro. Um, this lady, she's her ex. And uh, we're talking and we're getting to know each other and everything. Um, are you cool with me? Like, it's it's kind of getting a little serious. Like, we started just, you know, flirting and everything. But it's kind of getting a little serious. Are you cool with me, like, talking to her? And Sky was like, ah, no, it's cool, dog. Like, it was, it was a long time ago. And I was like, all right, no, cool. Oh, and so he gave me the blessing. So, yeah, no, I started seeing the shorty. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, whatever. You feel me? But then... um. It got to a point now. There was a time where I called Scar. I called Scar during he was still on a uh, year on FM. Mm-hmm. This is like year uh, a year or two later. I called Scar. He was in year on FM. Um, and Horari he's still on the show when I'm calling him. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I don't. I used to. I used to be a big fan of radio growing up. Mm-hmm. Cause there was nothing else. I didn't have anything else. All I had was BTV and radio. Mm-hmm. Growing up, I told you about my 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 uh, yeah upbringing. childhood yeah upbringing yeah so I don't I didn't watch radio I didn't listen to radio anymore yeah so I I forget sometimes or kind of Sky is probably on a show mm-hmm. hey Sky I'm trying to call Sky and I'm calling Sky I'm calling Sky can you sorry nika nika tamu uh yo I don't know was it about music or what so he answers the the phone. So, why the fuck never I don't tell it's a dog on radio never I can read you on one dog. Like never I can tell you I respect it through I made that and I was like ah uh, so yeah no I I I froze. I'm under uh, uh, okay. I then he hung up. Then I sent a message. Then I was like bro yeah, no, that's the ego kicking in now. Ah, dog. But I was still respectful. Mm-hmm. But I had to go in. The ego was kicking in, dog. That nigga can't just say that to you, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, it was just a situation where I'm like, yo, bro. You are my OG. I respect you. But you can't fucking talk to me like that, bro. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's what I said to the homie. And then he's like, no, fuck that OG shit. What, 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 what? I, I don't know what he said. I can't remember right now. Yeah, but then, um, then it got to now. Mm. But okay, now, nah, we, we got to that. Cool. And then booty butt chicks dropped. Hey, yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm accelerating stories. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I'm jumping just, every just day. Flow, 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 I'm flow, jumping flow, every day. Just keep flowing. Hey, and then uh, booty butt chicks dropped. The music video again. Mm. Mm. When it dropped, um, everybody thinks I started the beef. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Scar, Scar was like, he, he posted a tweet. He's like, uh, rappers got killed by a comedian in their own song. Yeah. And at that time, bro, mm. it was a time, man, I was in a state where I'm like, hey, ain't nobody can tell me shit. You can't say shit. If you say shit, I'm coming for you. Uh, and so, I went for him. So that's when I was like, oh, so the homie gonna say this shit. Why is the homie hate it? But I was a little bit disappointed though. Because at the time I felt like, ah, come on, this guy's is an OG, bro. He should understand this is a hip hop dog. Like he should be appreciating the fact that we did something that Every nobody ever did in Botswana. People are scared to do these kind of things. You know what I mean? Like having booty butt chicks all over. I was I was the first guy to do that. Shout out Young Amazing by the way. Yeah, like we did that and uh it was crazy and it just turned Botswana upside down. You know what I mean? 
So then I, I decided to do a diss track. And I, okay, no, this is hip hop. I get hip hop. We don't reply with fists. I don't go to Yarn FM and go in throw bricks at Ska. We gotta reply it the hip hop way. Let's make the game fun. Let's go. So I did the diss track. And then I think uh, he didn't reply it. And then uh, there was a point where now he replied. Yeah, I don't wait. I get it. He, uh, like, people now started talking about him a lot. You know what I mean? Mm, mm. And then, Len, I went, oh, okay, there's gold here. <laughs> there's gold here. Something can happen here. Because now people started talking about it. And, uh, you know, everywhere I went, they'll be like, Hante, what's happening between you and Scar? You know what I mean? And then, uh, oh, no, and then it got to a point now where, something again yeah and then i released another one that one then i went too far uh and i spoke about his baby mama i don't i never fucked his baby mama i fucked um <laughs> i fucked his ex any other one that we're talking about yeah well, so um when i spoke about his ex it was just to hurt his feelings and it was just hip hop. You feel? But it was his ex that I dated and fucked. So I just wanted to hurt his feelings. Yeah. But, yeah. So then he tried to come back now uh, a while later, but then I just started seeing what, oh, so this guy is playing a fool out of me. Uh, he knows, Hori, anytime I want traction, all I have to do is just poke Lati just a little bit where nobody sees at Twitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I just say something in Twitter, people will send it to him, and then he's gonna make make me famous. Cause he even ended up winning a bow movie. I mean, I mean, his album was probably dope. I don't know. I never yeah. listened to it cause at the time we we're beefing. I was which, like, which album? Is fuck it? his album. His songs for Adrian. His, I, I think wasn't it like Gap City something? Oh, Gap <coughs> No, I think the one which won the award is uh, Songs for Adrian. Anyway, both albums yeah. are top. Both albums, uh, albums are top. Yeah, but there yeah. was one that um won. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, but like uh, he was now popping again. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was because the album was hot or it was because cause, um, that whole thing called, caused the frenzy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, that's what happened at the time. And then I just decided, yo, um, I'm not going to reply to Sky anymore because now I was getting pissed also because now my career is always now, yo, so what happened? So okay, Scar. This, this Scar. I was like, ah, no ways. And I noticed what a Scar would just poke a little bit and then I would explode because he knew what I'm going to explode and then release a district, talk about him. And then now he's doing podcasts, talking about me, doing all of that. But now we cool. Uh, it was a mediation between me and him and a friend called um, Loretta Mehue. We were working together in Street Jive. It's a TV show where we go around the country looking for talent. We've been to Molepole, Kanye, Sarowe, um, Francis Town. Uh, we've been to Gabs also. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. there was 30K up for grabs and 10K, stuff like that. You know, and so. Uh, she did a video call and we spoke and it's like, hey, what's good? How's the show doing? Hey. And I, when he answered, I was like, and it's like, hey, what's up? Oh, when I leave you, I was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was all good. Like it was just yeah. uh, OG to to a lady. Know, yeah, you know what I mean. So it was all cool. I even sent him uh, a one latte T-shirt. I think yeah, a one latte T-shirt. It wasn't Gab City's boyfriend. Yeah. A one latte T-shirt. Cause he was like, bro, you need to send me a t-shirt, girl. Cause, cause I made that shit blow up. So yeah. I was like, yeah, no, I'll send you a t-shirt. I sent it to him. I don't know if Loretta um delivered it, but yeah, that's what happened. But we got no bad blood right now. All right, no, that's good to see brothers making peace. Yeah, no. Uh, so while you're still explaining, you mentioned something. Put body cheeks. <coughs> hey, that was a, an X videos type of content. Mm -hmm. X videos. Mm -hmm. X videos dot <laughs> What was what, what was the concept behind that video, bro? Um Okay, um you need to understand like um I'm one of the guys who had to knock through the doors to get into this game, bro. Like I tried so hard, like I had songs that were better than a lot of people in the game, but uh my songs were never played. 
Mm-hmm. You know, there were funny things that were happening in the game that I only mentioned on this show. Yeah. You know, it's very difficult to get your music in a game in mm-hmm. Botswana, mm-hmm. especially here. Um, it's really difficult. So uh, we started, me and Young Amazing linked up at some point. Gore, I'm just going to cut out the, the the other backward part of my career. Yeah. I'll start from when me and Young linked. We decided, okay. <coughs> I was like, okay, let's let's make music, young. What do you say? Yeah. He was like, yeah, no, cool. Let's make music. All right, cool. Make music. Um, and then uh, we I start we started to say, okay, no, let's let's make music that is clean mm-hmm. for radio, since we want to play on radio. Yeah. Uh, we made clean music, good music. I remember there was a song called um. Knock Knock Remix. Mm. Yeah, it was a remake of Gimaru and Spisa's song. Mm-hmm. Uh, we made another song called um, uh, mm, 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 What was the song? Mm, 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 mm. Ah, dog. Can I forget my gender. whole song? Nah, it's not this gender, dog. We'll get there. Uh, dark Place. Dark Place. I was in a dark place. Yeah. A dark place. You can check it on YouTube and everything. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we did Dark Place. It was also like an amazing song. The video was also amazing out of this world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this was during uh, like COVID times. Yeah. Think about it. You know what I mean? So we did all these amazing songs and these way worst songs that are playing on radio. Yeah. Still was not playing. Yeah. So then we, I got to a point where I was like, ah, young man. Young bro. We've been making this good music. We made sure there's no, there's no like um, curse words. Mm. It's clean music for radio, mm. but they're still not playing us. Yeah. We're not playing on Yarn FM. We're not playing on RB Two. We're not playing on. I want to play with Caps FM. It was kind of no way. Yeah. So you know what I'm thinking. Let's do the opposite. We make music for the streets. We do, we do the opposite. So that's how I was like, okay. The funny thing is, um, the music video I conceptualize it because I like I like I like uh, producing, like in terms okay directing. Yeah. So, I executive produce a lot and uh, direct a lot. So I was like, okay, we're gonna do a song about booty, and mm-hmm. the music video is just gonna be booty everywhere, and it's gonna be uncensored. What do you think about that, young? Yeah. And I was thinking Young's gonna say no. You know what I mean? Because he had just done Kirin Kirin Korong Korong. You know, Young Amazing. Young King Born Amazing. Yeah. Drink too big, they thought I was crazy. Yeah. So, and then Young's like, hell yeah, let's do it. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Mm-hmm. So we recorded the song. There was a first, uh, there was a first, like, uh, version of a song that was, um, yeah, it was just me and Young. Mm-hmm. Ah, we dropped it when the people were saying, "Ah, so sema raobad na tika leguesh." That is the worst song we've ever heard. And if you ever want me to rise above anything, uh-huh. you should say anything I did is the worst. It was whack. Yeah. So I was like, "Oh, so they're saying it's whack." I'm gonna show them it ain't work. It, it ain't whack. So I was like, "Yo, young, let's step into the studio again." Yeah. I I oh actually I skipped a part. Mm-hmm. We released the first music video of Booty Bad Chicks. The controversial one. No, 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 no. The controversial one too, yeah. But it was the one where people were like, ah, these girls have no ass. Ah, this yeah, is, ah, yeah. these girls are slenders. Ah, ah, and the song <laughs> is whack. You yeah. know what I mean? So I was yeah. like, oh, all right, cool. So that's when I was like, let's do the remix. Yeah. And I was like, I have somebody in mind, William Last. Mm-hmm. I was, and I was like, yo, let's go. Did you refuse to to be part of the uh, scenes where they were, where, where they were cheeks? <laughs> Hence, him being in the kitchen. Um, I think w- William, w- it took a little bit of time for William to come through uh-huh. until I just I just got pissed at him. I was just like, yo, bro, if you don't want to be part of the song, just tell me, dog. You can just tell me. But we had worked before in the past, like, uh, through like the agency X models and everything, ah. you know, so 
he was he once came to to be one of the judges. Yeah. You know what I mean? At some audition. So I was just like, yo, bro, um, I feel like I'm following you around and I'm forcing you to do something that you don't want to do. If you don't want to come through, just tell me. And then one day, Young Amazing calls me and said, yo, he finally came through. He's at the studio. Yeah. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. And then um, William came through to the music video. I think William thought mm -hmm. that the video is about booty and the video is going to be crazy because he probably saw the first one. Yeah. I don't know if he saw the first one, uh -huh. but he didn't think, I don't think he thought it was going to be as crazy as it turned out. Yeah. So he was there and I wasn't even there when he shot his part. Mm -hmm. I was there when he arrived, we were there, we were chilling, he was smoking outside. Oh. You know what I mean? Like it was all cool. Fui uh quiet -huh. and everything, we could deal with. And then um, I left, it was still like locked down. Mm -hmm. So I was there to go and buy alcohol. Muri Chachi, arrest me. You can't arrest me now. <laughs> yeah, so I was there to go and buy like a bottle of Gardens. I bought that shit for 600 bucks. Damn. Yeah, so I bought that um, bottle and came back. I think he, I think he was leaving when I came through. So it was just like, no, yeah, no shop. That's why you don't see any... Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's still busy. I can really tell you I always direct, so I need to make sure I organize everything. Yeah. So the liquor, I gotta make sure shorties are sipping if they wanna sip, cause some shorties be like, yo, I'm feeling a little bit shy. I just wanna take a shot or two. You know what I mean? So I just be like, alright, cool. And uh, by the way, none of the shorties who are my video are part of my agency, cause I know if you put girls who are from your agency into some of the things that you do, they're gonna use it against you. Yeah. Especially on something like booty by chicks. Okay. Uh just in short. In short. Yeah, in short, in short, in short. Yeah. yeah. After that feature, people started saying that uh this guy is the type of person to even shoot a sex tape. Which he was short though. Ah uh, no, but that wasn't a sex tape, man. Yeah. And it wasn't supposed to be out there. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh that 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 is what inspired uh booty by chicks. Yeah. Cause I get it was a video where I was like spanking booties on the side and be like make a clap yeah i was like make a clap make a clap so now people were trying to like uh make it into something else so i just be like make a song about it let's put it in their faces since they're already talking about it all right no but i never I, I don't think i'd ever do like porn and sex tapes nah it's not me uh -huh. yeah yeah. All right. So before we shut it down, my last question for you now. Mm -hmm. uh, you introduced um, a new uh, episode called Smash or Pass. 100%. You know the vibes, nigga. What's, what, what's that, bro? Mm. What's that? It's a YouTube show. Mm -hmm. You know, it happened uh, immediately after after lockdown. Yeah. You know, uh, we de I decided, you know, I, st I wanted to start building my YouTube, mm -hmm. you know, so I decided, yo, let's start creating content because I started learning how to edit stuff mm -hmm. during lockdown, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, I went in. Smash or Pass is basically like it's guys and girls, one line this side, one line this side. Yeah. One person at a time, you stand in front of the first one, then the second one, the second, the third one, the fourth one, the sixth one. Mm -hmm. you are, as you do this you are telling the person would you smash or pass yeah <laughs> and i make it more fun by bringing like comedians rappers influencers to you know to make it more fun and it even becomes more fun when people give reasons as to why they should they wouldn't smash or why they would smash or why they would pass or why they would pass yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay all right and uh it, it seems to be catching momentum for days yeah. um it is um i mean People knew Lati before, but Smash or Pass just turned into something different. Cause so Lati is now a content creator? Um, bro, like I always say, yeah. people always say you shouldn't be a jack of all trades, a mm. master of none. Yeah. But you know what I always say? Yeah. I say when God puts you in this earth, mm -hmm. you got to come through and do everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, 
explore every talent that God gives you mm-hmm. so that when you stand in front of him in the last day you should say God salute I did everything yeah I explored every talent you gave me so that's what I do so that's why um I'm a vocalist mm-hmm. you know but right now what I'm focusing on is DJing I've been taking classes I've been okay. working so hard Mm-hmm. You know, I've been going to classes with DJ Quest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, DJ Quest is a really dope DJ, and uh, he's been helping me really greatly. You know, to n- n- nurture my skills. I've been paying a lot of money uh, to make sure, cause I invest in everything that I see fit. You know, where I see I can grow, I don't mind putting money in. You feel me? Yeah. So yeah, uh, content creation, hundred percent. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Why shouldn't I do it if I'm so great at it? You know what I mean? I got music that's coming through. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, that's an, I got a, an international EP and music that's coming wow. through. Wow, okay. Yeah. <coughs> and I also got new management. I don't know if I should say it or not, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, no, moving on. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, bro. Uh, before you shut it down due to time, uh, what, what, what you want to be remembered is when it's all said and done. Um, I know I, I heard that question before, but yeah. I always, I don't know. I don't know why I never thought about it. Yeah. About me. Uh, bro. <sighs> bro. I just want to be remembered as an ego who just came through and did his thing, bro. Yeah. You feel me? Like, Come on. Blocked so many times. Try this. Try that side, bro. Like, people say you're whack. You do this. But they, yo, it's whack. Try that. They say you can't be anything. Yeah. But I still came through, bro. Yeah. That is me, bro. The most hated. Yeah. Never had a bait. Yeah. All right. Uh, just shut it down for us, bro. Just shut it down uh, with your signature. My name is Lati. AKA Gap City's boyfriend. Yeah. AKA the most hated. AKA public enemy number one. AK 